Welcome everyone. Before this book supplement begins, I'd just like to say anyone who consider themselves to be an entrepreneur and anyone in the business industry need to purchase this book immediately if they already have not already done so. Okay. So today's book supplement will be The Everything Store by Brad Stone. And what can you learn from reading this book? You can learn how Jeff Bezos developed Amazon from an online bookstore to what it is today, how Amazon transformed retailing, and how Jeff Bezos innovated his way out of his problems and overcame obstacles. Okay, say so 1994, Jeff Bezos was 29 years old and he worked at a hedge fund named D.E. Shaw on Wall Street. That's in the early stages of the internet. And Jeff Bezos pondered the idea, what is the internet's commercial potential? No, he did some research on it, and what he came up with is the concept of the everything store, where he would bring together sellers and buyers, and basically give them anything that you know they can be traded traded between them. But rather than going after everything, he decided to go after books, after researching the best possible thing to go after first. And so he quit his job and moved to um, Seattle, started an online bookstore. Three years later, that bookstore went public, and in the first day had sold shares for $54 million and every initial investor in today's online bookstore became multi-millionaires. One year later, 1998, after having a strong foothold in the books industry, they decided to go after the music and DVDs industry and change their slogan of Amazon from Earth's largest bookstores to Earth's biggest selection. Okay, in 2001 now, with the dot-com bubble hit, Amazon early on sold 672 million in convertible stocks overseas but their company wasn't doing well in terms of internal accounting. So what they did was, Jeff Bezos, he slowed the introduction of new products, he converted to Linux operating systems, and he improved distribution centers. So he used this negative as a positive to really revamp the company in a positive direction. In 2002, Amazon launched a, a service called the Free Super Saving System, where if customers purchase a certain amount of money, they would get free shipping. And after the recession or you know, the, the dot-com bubble, that's when their profit really started by going up. In 2004, Lab 126 was, was a, t a satellite team in Silicon Valley was brought together by Jeff Bezos and their purpose was to create a digital e-reader. In 2006, two similar satellite teams were also formed, one in Cape Town, Africa, and one in Seattle. The one in Cape Town, Africa, they produced the EC2 which just allowed developers to use Amazon's computers to run their programs and the one in Seattle the S3 it lets people store digital photos and document Amazon servers now companies like Pinterest and Instagram would not be here without the help of Amazon in 2007 that's when they launched the digital e-reader the Kindle and yeah the guy was like yeah so yeah we build this when your paper book sales go down do not call my name because everyone expected you know for him to lose money but the quarterly sales in 2007 stood at three billion dollars and it was due to Amazon's prime success the fulfillment centers and the Kindle and it was a big shock to everyone you know besides Jeff Bezos so also after having a strong foothold in the books industry the music and the DVDs industry they decided to go after footwear and Zappos.com was one of the leaders in it so Amazon tried to buy them but Zappos was like, nah, bro, we're not, we're not selling. Then Amazon did. They started Endless.com to sell their own footwear shoes and stuff like that. So in 2008 now, as I'm sure you're wondering what exactly happened between Zappos and Amazon. So Zappos lost a lot of their profits. And because it was a recession year, Zappos couldn't get any money to re refight. So Amazon ended up buying Zappos for $900 million. So now Amazon had a strong foothold in books, music, and DVDs, footwear. So they decided to go into baby items. Now the company that had a, a large sales something and was Quidzy or Diapers.com. So eventually Amazon go against them by um, undercutting their price by 30% and eventually buying the company for $600 million, similar to what they did to Zappos. And this is really interesting, guys. I mean. I know this is just like a regular book, but you know this book is amazing. You need to purchase this book, read this book. Amazon and Jeff Bezos are doing really big things, and we all need to take note and pay close attention to exactly how he execute what he executed. I mean, this is no joke. This is different from all my other books, but this one is amazing. You need to check it out and read the book.